PlayStation Pandemonium. And a shocking acquisition and what that might mean for Ark 2. You right, kids, it's Ras Clark and welcome to your regular Ark community news. Before we begin, don't forget to hit that like button, subscribe, share around and let's get into it. So a big patch rolled out to PlayStation last night, covering many issues already addressed on PC, such as several exploits being patched, holes in Lost Island, crashes, overspawning, dermis issues, artifacts issues, void worm eggs not decaying, fog whilst underwater, clutter and foliage, adjustments to the Amargosaurus, cinemat crops, your respawn map cords have been fixed, large beaver dams have been resolved, some memory improvements, and cave taming is now available to you. As demonstrated in my video I posted just recently about Ravager Taming. Xbox hasn't got this update just yet, but you'll be happy that it hasn't. Why? Well, following this patch there was PlayStation Pandemonium, as all official servers couldn't be accessed following this. Yes, there was a lot of chaos behind the scenes, a lot of people complaining. Of course, not being able to access your server, seeing what's going on in your base, is your baby creatures okay? Are people raiding you? It's all gonna go a bit crazy for you out there but don't worry you wasn't the only ones everybody had this issue so nobody could get on and the servers did eventually come on after several hours each server got slowly drip fed until they all came back online but there was a big big gap there and hopefully it hasn't affected too many players i'm hoping that they put all the servers on hold whilst this was happening but i have heard from a few of you that you couldn't respawn on the map you had like a five minute cooldown until you could respawn on the maps I've seen this time and time again when server rollbacks happen, when server changes happen. It happened on my unofficial servers way back when, so I'm not surprised to see this happening after several hours of downtime. But hopefully this hasn't affected your actual bases, fingers crossed, and let's just hope when this rolls out to Xbox, you aren't going to suffer the same fate. I'm sure they're not. I'm sure Wildcard know what happened and are going to ensure that doesn't happen to you too. But it's certainly not helping to ease tension with PlayStation players, not least over over the PS5 enhancement that we now think is now just being forgotten and will never appear. I don't think it will, to be quite honest with you. I think it's been over 12 months and we've heard absolutely nothing. So it's a safe bet to think the enhancement isn't going to come, as well, of course, as your frustrations over Arc 2 and it being somewhat of a Microsoft Xbox exclusive. At least it was announced as such, but the wording at the time made me believe that it was going to be only a timed announcement. Now, my opinion has changed, yes, because of some big, big news that just happened yesterday. Microsoft are buying them all. Game developers, of course, whereby they acquired Bethesda a few months ago and have now gone in to acquire Activision Blizzard for $70 billion. Well, just shy 68.7, which is just an enormous amount and shocking the industry because of their back catalog of games. The big one, of course, being Call of Duty, a massive franchise, which, yeah, would be a shock to the industry to see if this became a Microsoft. Microsoft exclusive. Along with other games out there, there were originally PlayStation flagship games such as Crash Bandicoot, Spyro the Dragon, Tony Hawk's even originated on the PlayStation, but other huge franchises such as Overwatch, Diablo, Guitar Hero, this is a huge massive acquisition in an apparent competition to compete with things like Meta, but certainly more than anyone Sony. PlayStation are certainly going to get a bit worried following this. Bethesda as well. What is going to happen in the future for PlayStation? I've got to say, it looks pretty bleak. I've got a PS5. It feels like it's going to turn into a Netflix player in the coming years. But don't worry too much just yet. This deal won't be finalized until next year, 2023. And apparently Microsoft will continue to support Activision games on other platforms. What games we don't know, but to spend 68.7 billion dollars I don't think they're going to spend that much to allow these games to be on their competitors platform. So what does this mean for Arc 2? So Microsoft aren't buying out wildcard, there's no news of them doing that, but you have to wonder if they paid just shy of the total worth of Nintendo, you've got to wonder how much they probably spent for Arc 2 to be an exclusive for them. And if they're spending that much to acquire developers, I think it's safe to say they can probably afford to pay enough to make Art 2 an exclusive to them. I know I would never have believed it would happen, but following this news, 
following Bethesda, Microsoft are coming guns out a-blazing and taking it all. It could stand a very good chance, R2, maybe only on Xbox. I can't even believe that is going to be a thing. I think it's crazy business sense to do so. But if they will pay the money, why wouldn't you take it? It could certainly be the future and I would certainly start thinking about buying an Xbox if you want to get Arc 2. Now nothing confirmed, please don't be assured this is concrete evidence that Arc 2 will be an Xbox exclusive. It's certainly not. I reiterate when this was first announced, the devs in their wording made it very careful to sound like, in my assumption, that this would be a timed, and it might still be, but following this huge game industry breaking news, who knows, this could actually be a thing. I am certainly now thinking about getting an Xbox myself. They've done it. They've played the game. They've played it well. They've got me wanting to go back. And it's crazy to think we're back in that cycle. The PlayStation 3 era, where Sony got far too confident with the PlayStation 2 success, where they thought, well, we can just put whatever price tag we want on the PlayStation 3 and people will come running. Well, Microsoft, of course, capitalized on that. Xbox 360 did so well throughout that generation. And then dropped the ball themselves when it came around to the Xbox One. And history seems to be repeating itself once again. PlayStation 5 is still outselling the Xbox One X, but for how long now this has happened, I would be worried being a PlayStation player. I would be worried being Sony. This could spell big bad news for them. Then don't get me wrong, they are still supporting so many great games out there. God of War being one, can't wait to play it looks absolutely stunning certainly a great exclusive to playstation along with many many others but this does spell questions surrounding the future of arc i have to say i am very very concerned now that you're not gonna get it on playstation you're just not but until that news is official don't rush out to buy an xbox just yet you never know it may come to playstation 5 and only the next gen consoles i still see a lot of you out there asking if this is coming to pre-gen ps4 and xbox it's not this is why this sequel exists because we need to move on we need an improved version of arc and in order to do that we need to do away with the old generation consoles they just can't handle arc anymore i'm sure you know people out there that are playing the latest maps they are struggling they really really are well apparently playstation 5 players are struggling but it has to be a thing next gen unreal 5 the future is already here if you want to be in that future you're going to need a next gen console and maybe an xbox series x which I'm pretty sure I called a 1X throughout this video. Don't know why they couldn't just give it a brand new, non-confusing name, but whatever. We'll have to wait and see. It's shout out time, and this time we're shouting out TLC138 Gaming, who deserves so much praise. It's somebody I was watching way before I even got into this content creation game. Somebody I use with so many tips and tricks. TLC is such a creative builder in the world of Ark and has gone to a new length by recreating the castle in Lost Island to be looking like a proper legit castle as it should be. And it is such a wonderful build to see and certainly influenced me. I certainly want to try and replicate this. Don't know how, seeing that I've got to do it in a PVP build, but with PVE aesthetics, this is a wonderful build, not using mods. There is no clip on this, I think, but it is a great joy to see the castle rejuvenated, refreshed, renovated to be what it should be. And please do go check out this video. I'll leave a link in the description as well as many other videos TLC has done in the past. Honestly, he has been one of the most inspiring creators out there for me in terms of arc building. I wouldn't know as much as I did in arc without him. So please do go check him out. Make sure to subscribe to him. You won't regret it. And there we go, that's your news for today. What do you think about this acquisition and what it may mean for ARK? I think it could mean exactly what I'm thinking it's going to mean. And PlayStation players, are you still encountering issues following the server downtime last night? Hopefully you're not, hopefully it's all running smoothly now. And again, Xbox will be getting this patch very soon, hopefully not with those issues. Thanks all for tuning in. My name's Ross Clark. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And as always, uh, peace out.
Thank you.